This morning, saints. Yes, good morning on this chilly morning. Amen. The in fifth, fall. 15th of October. And I just bless God. We bless Him together today, every day together, Sharon and I. And we just bless God for you, saints. We're all members of His body today. And we want to be obedient to Him. Amen. And we want to walk with Him and worship Him. And humble ourselves before him to be used of him. To be channels of life and truth and righteousness. And mercy and grace and love. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will so anoint to your word today, O God. Lord, that we would worship you in the beauty of holiness. With the garment of praise on, Lord. Hallelujah. And that we would love you and love one another, Lord. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask you today that you would rout the enemy on the right hand and on the left hand. In behalf of your flock throughout the earth today. Lord, that you would have your way with us. 
is our prayer that we would decrease and you would increase is our prayer father and that lord father god that you will continue to reveal christ in us more and more into the perfect day and that you would show us how to die to self more lord show us O oh god and have mercy upon your flock today teach us remind us that we are overcomers and that we are the victorious ones in this earth today and that we lord in the spiritual realm your people are the giants in this earth not the wicked not the devil's people but your church lord hallelujah in the spiritual realm hallelujah oh hallelujah Jesus, you overcame by laying down your life. And you said, as the Father sends me, so send I you. Let it be so in our life today, Lord. Help us to lay down our all to you, Lord. All of who we are, all of what we have, let it be yours, Lord, today. And crush the serpent under our feet in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Today's message, born to love and serve God. Oh, hallelujah. People want to know sometimes, why were they born? You were born to love God and to serve him and to serve his people. This and serve all mankind. This is what Jesus did. Jesus was what? Read it right there. Verse 1, chapter 5 of 1 John. We're still in 1 John because that's so powerful. Get with it. Hallelujah. First John 5, 1. Whosoever believeth. That Jesus is the Christ is born, born of, of God. God. Hallelujah. And everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of God. That is begotten of him. Begotten of him. Of him. Of God. That's right. You right. said it right. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now let's let's I want to <clears throat> John is coming down to the last chapter in this book and you know, I don't know where he was located when he wrote it, and he sent it to the churches. This is a, a powerful reminder for the church in the first century, okay? And this is doctrine. This is teaching. This is the word of Almighty God. You got to remember, John the Apostle, he was an Israelite, okay? Like Paul was an Israelite. Like Peter was an Israelite. These people were Israelites. They were Hebrews, okay? Hallelujah! Descended from Abraham. And they were looking for the Messiah. And the Messiah came. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Messiah. The anointed one. And most of the, of the Hebrews and the Jews of that day. Rejected the Messiah. They rejected their Messiah. That they had been crying for. For centuries. For centuries. And centuries. That the prophets prophesied of. Well he came. And they rejected him. They threw him to the side. They said, let us kill him and we will get the inheritance. Jesus told the parable of the uh, the vineyard. And built the hedge. And then the owner of the vineyard sent people to get, you know, get the inheritance. To, I mean, to get the crop. And they beat him and threw him down and cast him aside. They wouldn't give him anything. And it was a parable of the kingdom of Israel at that time. And then he said, well, I'll send my son. They'll, they'll respect him. They'll, they'll give him what's yeah. due. And no, mm -hmm. they said, let's kill him so we can get the inheritance. Mm -hmm. But see, they lost. Instead of dying to self and believing Jesus, they rejected him. And they were envious of him because he was who he said he is. And they were destroyed. Yeah. At this time of this writing that John wrote this verse, Jerusalem was laid waste. There was no temple of Herod. There was nothing there but rocks just turned over. And it was just a mess. It was all gone. 70 AD, the Romans destroyed Jerusalem. And scattered all the people. You know, the Lord said, what did he say? <coughs> that Jesus is not going to lose anyone... Whom the Father gives. Whom the Father has given you. That's right. Okay. Well, what does he say to the Pharisees? You don't hear me because you're not of me. That's right. 
the works you do are what? Of your, of your father, father, the, the devil. devil. John chapter 8. That's so right. he just pinpointed him right there, didn't he? That's right. So what is he saying in this scripture? All that the father give him, Will he's come not going to gonna him. lose. That's right, absolutely. And they, they're going to come to That's him. That's right. Okay, well, the ones that don't hear him and they're not of him and don't come to him, what? They're gone. Yeah. They're out of the kingdom. Yeah. They're out of Christ. They're not in Christ, okay? We don't understand this. The Lord has made vessels for wrath, and that's something we we can't contemplate that. We can't understand that. That's but right. hey, that's God's business. That's right. We that's don't not have to, our business. We don't even have to worry about it. We don't Amen. have to say, wow, you know, or anything. Because God is God, and he's going to do that's what he's right. going to do, and nobody's going to say nay to him. And I'll tell you what, in this hour we're in right now, <laughs> we need the discernment of the Lord because there are vessels of wrath walking around masquerading mm -hmm. as God's people. Oh, I know it. Masquerading and coming in under the guise of good when it isn't good and you find it out real fast. You know, and the deception is so sneaky, isn't it? I know it. And it is. That you can even have a, a feeling of, yeah, that's right. Yeah, whatever. Right. But then, boy, not very long after that, right. you, you it's revealed, no, this is not what you think it is. No, this is not what it looks like. Right. I know this person is saying this, and boy, they're quoting, and yeah, they say it all. Uh-huh. But let me tell you what their heart looks like, the Lord said. And this is a vessel of wrath. That's right. That's right. Coming in to try to destroy. Now, <coughs> these aren't things we can understand. That's right. But we are born to love and serve God. That's right. That's and our purpose. And how do we do that? Let's get to that. Okay. Read John Gill. I want you to read Gill on chapter 1. I mean, verse 1 of chapter 5 of 1 John. This is a very in, in, very awesome uh, commentary. John Gill wrote this back in the 1600s. And uh, he wrote a commentary of the whole Bible. You can get that from eSword. It's on the commentaries uh, downloads. It's free. And it goes through every verse of the Bible. So when you have your eSword up and you're reading the Bible on eSword, you want to study, you can read John Gill's commentary and other people that you can get for free. Uh, and it's not that... Everything he says is carte blanche. No, because he says some things in some of his commentaries that I don't totally agree with. But, hey, this is good right here. So I want you to read that. So, Okay. I'm not saying he's blaspheming God or anything. He doesn't. I don't think he's a false teacher. But there's some things I don't hard to understand. So there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. No, he's not a false no, teacher. No, not at all. Uh -uh. Okay, First John 5, 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Okay. Okay. Now, in there, that saying, you know, you believe Jesus is the Christ, that he came in the flesh, God in the flesh, came to this earth. Now, that word Christ is Messiah, okay? It's the anointed one, okay? The anointed, the Messiah, okay? And he says, or the Messiah that was prophesied of old, whosoever be that believeth that Jesus is the Messiah, okay, was long promised to the Jews in whom they expected. There was a person spoken of in the writings of the Old Testament under this character, Psalm 2, 2. And the Jews looked for him. And Jesus of Nazareth is he. Hallelujah. He is the one, okay, as appears by all the characteristics of the Messiah and prophecy being found upon him. This the Jews deny. And they still deny it today, okay? But is the grand article of faith embraced by the apostles and followers of Jesus? Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. And is of very great importance, and is of very great importance. He that denies it is a liar, okay? And he that does not believe it shall die in his sins. The word signifies, quote, anointed, end quote. 
and includes all the offices of the Son of God to which he was anointed. Now, this is important. As prophet, priest, and king. Now, Jesus said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. See, our office and our walk with the Lord in surrender, okay, we walk as a prophet, as a priest, and as a king. That's how we walk. The prophet speaks the truth. He loves. He speaks the truth to people, okay? The priest, he intercedes. He prays. He ministers to God for people, okay? You see what I'm saying? And then king, he rules. He he, he speaks the truth. You see what I'm saying? He, he makes a judgment, the king. He says, "That's this one's to the right and that one's to the left. You see what I'm saying? It says he will rule as God. <clears throat> so right. that doesn't mean you are God. No. It means you partake in the divine nature. That's right. Well, he and, says that in this commentary right And now. as you partake in the divine <laughs> nature, what does that mean? God can use you as That's a vessel, man. Jesus to flow said, through 100%. He that overcomes will rule the nations with a rod of iron. Right. Hallelujah. Right. That's God's people. Okay? That's God's people today. Oh, and praise God. So, what's God. the enemy try to do? He tries to do all this pulling down nonsense, pulling down into a, a mire of mud mm -hmm. where we don't think we have the authority of the Lord or this or that or some excuse you know, that right now, we don't have it, it, you know. it. It's coming to me right now. The devil has, has done his work. And I'm telling yeah. you right now that the devil is a filthy, stinking liar. And I'm telling you right now, the Lord Jesus is the truth in his spiritual kingdom. Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered unto the Jews. But my kingdom is not from hence. Jesus' kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. Okay? It encompasses all of heaven and all of earth and all of creation. His principle, who he is, the almighty God in the flesh. His, his kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. We are spirit beings in this body. We have a soul like Christ did. Hallelujah. And that's the and, way we fight. And we're wa yes, and we're walking that's in this we earth. Battle. We're down here. We're down here on this terra firma, this earth, this Babylon place of rebellion against God. We're not to rebel. We're to be obedient to God and to be obedient to his word and believe his word. Hallelujah. You know, that reminds me. Of Praise the Lord. God. The Lord reminded me of that time at the flea market in Oklahoma when we were doing such warfare and just oh man, getting down Ooh. with battle almost face to face with the devil. And I still remember that day that the Lord had you speak something in such a mighty way. And that one person, boy, they were getting to get. Boy, they were getting to get as fast <laughs> as they could. They were just like, boom, 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 all the way down through there. You know why? Because the devil cannot stick around. That's right. Well, what it was, let me just tell the story a little bit. Everybody plays their music in the flea market. Everybody has their music playing. So we had our music playing, worshiping the Lord Jesus. Well, next to us, there was this guy that was an Islam guy. Okay, he was he believed in Muhammad, and he find he he got all mad and everything, or somebody was across the way, or somebody I forget. No, it might not have been that guy, the other person on the corner. Anyway, I said, no, I'm not turning down my music. No, I told him I ain't turning it down. You listen to all this trash and the devil's people all around here. That's what I said. And so they got all mad and everything, and started getting real, going back and forth across the way. And I was standing up for the truth. And this lady comes, and she's looking right at us. It was that little that little Asian lady. Mm -hmm. She was just looking at us. And and then I I just rebuked the devil is what I did. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. I rebuked the devil <laughs> when I did that. <laughs> that lady shot down the aisle. She was gone out of sight. Boy. She was running down the other way. And I'm telling you right now, when God puts you in a public place, God mm. might put you in a public square, okay? I mean, there's, there's stuff coming to this earth. People are going to be gathering in, in little towns and cities. People will come together. Go, what are we going to do? What are we going to... I mean, God might have you go to one of those places. I'm sure he will have his people there. You have to stand for the truth. You have to speak the truth of the cross. Hallelujah. In that hour. See? In every hour. Because the cross is what sets men free. Hallelujah. You die there and then you're resurrected. Hallelujah. Okay? You lay it down. You walk in resurrection power. I was thinking about... I was outside yesterday morning, 
<clears throat> and I was just thinking about this world system, you know, you have these, this unholy trinity of politics, economics, and religion, okay, in this earth today. It's an unholy trinity. And man wants to rule man. You understand? Man wants to rule man. Man wants to put people under their boot. God wants to free people from out underneath the boot, okay? God wants to free them, bring them into Christ. When you come into Christ, you are a new creation. You come into Christ by believing that he is the Messiah. You come into Christ when you repent of your sins and believe the gospel, okay? You get born anew from heaven. You're in a new kingdom. You're above this world, the kingdom, okay? Hallelujah. We're, we're above it, amen? And what do you hear in the church? You have movements in the church where people are trying to get more of what? The Holy Spirit, right? They, oh, Holy Spirit, you know, they're calling on the Holy Spirit. And it's almost like a worshiping the Holy Spirit when what the, the Spirit's given to what? To exalt Jesus, edify Jesus. To edify Jesus. To glorify Jesus. Yeah. The Holy Spirit's not up. right. Holy Spirit's not sent to lift himself up. Right. So when you see that, that's a wrong that's a wrong yeah. doctrine, a that's wrong a way. Wrong okay. Yeah. And and I was just thinking about that, and I was thinking about this world system, and it's like the Lord showed me. He said that money is like the Holy Spirit in this world system, okay? Because with it, you can do whatever you want. You can control people. You can do this. You can do that. And that's what they do with money, right? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, wow, Lord, that is that is crazy. But, it, but that came to me that just like the Lord right out of the blue just sh shared that with me, and you can see that because people are just mad about getting more and more and more of this world stuff when all this world stuff's going to burn up. None of it's going to matter. It's not only that. They got some just ideas that are crazy out there, you know, that they are talking about the Holy Spirit and they say even that marijuana is the Holy oh, yeah, Spirit. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and, and that's how they get by with all the stuff about, you know, smoking it and stuff hey that's the holy spirit yeah. you know i get revelations i get this and that yeah no wonder right. no wonder you're in another ethereal place that's because right. it's a mind altering drug that's right that's right marijuana is a mind altering drug and it's not it the holy alters spirit. your mind that's right so you and know, it ain't the holy spirit no it's no. not the holy spirit and no wonder people are you know, they're getting all what they're doing and stuff like that because they make excuses for doing what they do. I'm when the you. Bible plainly tells us, you know, it, he doesn't want us doing anything, taking anything that will alter our mind, our way of thinking. He wants us to have his way of thinking. That's right. See? Which is, which is to serve. Okay? Jesus said, as my father sent me, so send I you. A sound and Jesus mind. came, right. And he, Jesus came to serve us. Okay? That's what he came to do. To serve his father. To be obedient to his father. Everything Jesus came to do, that's why we were born anew. To do as he did. As my father sent me, so send I you. Okay, and this is big. This is big. I mean, we can look at the bigness of it. Oh man, Lord, I, I, I can't do all that. You know that. And the Lord says, "Finally, you understand. Oh, you, you, are you sure you can't do it, you, Lord? I'm positive I can't do." It. He says, "All right, then step aside, because I'll do it. See, I'll do it through you. Okay, if we would but step aside, just let the self man die, and the Lord takes us up, and He does it through us." <clears throat> You think Sharon and I planned all this? You think we planned to do everything we've done <laughs> since we got married? We haven't planned anything. Okay? If, we, if we had known the, half the stuff, we'd oh, probably man. run the other I way. mean, the Lord <laughs> has guided us. The Lord has, has helped us. The Lord has taught us, okay, and is teaching us, even this very day, okay? We haven't done this. <clears throat> this is God's work. This is how he chooses to use these two vessels, okay? 
And it's not in line with religion out in the world, okay? It's not in line with the Protestant religion or the Catholic religion or the Islamic religion or the Buddhist religion or the Hindu religion or the Zen religion or the Zoroastrianism religion. I can go on and on with religions because they're all over the world, okay? There's over eight, almost 8 billion people on this planet. And everybody has a God, everybody, okay, of one type or another. But we, as believers, have the true the only true living God, okay? The one who created all things out of things which do not appear. The one who is the almighty God. And he came down here. He became a man. Wow. And he showed us how to walk. Here's how you do it. You want victory? You want increase? Here's how you get it. You get increase by decrease, okay? That, that's that's how the you way get it. it works. And that's the way it works. It does. See, John said, John the Baptist, he said, I must decrease, he must increase. See, when John's ministry was finished, what happened? He was arrested. And then he was beheaded. Okay? And he was out of the scene. But John, Jesus said, he was the greatest. Jesus said, what he said the greatest prophet he also said elijah came and he was talking about john, john the baptist. baptist that's right and people yeah. today they're saying elijah's coming back no elijah already came see john the baptist was elijah in the spirit of power of elijah okay and right now that spirit can jump on you hallelujah that spirit can come through you if you're a surrendered vessel when you're talking to the religious crowd and you can proclaim the truth of God's word. Because I'm telling you right now, these people out in this religious system, they are not worshiping the true and living God. They're worshiping religion. They're worshiping their plan. They're worshiping their order. And if you go up there and you start speaking the truth of the cross to them, you, you upset their order, watch out what happens. Watch out. You know, uh, the spirit of Elijah uh, can manifest to you. And I wouldn't say jump on you, but manifest to you. Because uh, the Lord that's talks, true, right? Yeah, 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 the, yeah. The Lord talks about the end times, and that Elijah. It's not talking about Elijah coming in the Elijah coming down here. He's already gone to heaven, you guys. That's right. Glorified body. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's not coming back here to earth. That's right. This is speaking of a spiritual thing. That's and exactly we right. can operate in the spirit of which Elijah had. That's right. Because it's the Holy Spirit. Okay. That's and right. it's a bold spirit. <clears throat> Amen. It's a bold spirit. It's a powerful spirit. Hallelujah. See, we can manifest in that way. And I believe God is raising up <coughs> a company of those that operate in that boldness Amen. that Elijah operated in. that's right amen 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 the lord i tell you what the lord will use us as far as we will let him that's right praise the lord as far as we will let him do it as far as we will be dying to ourself and letting him come out and shine forth he'll do it as right. long you know as far as we'll let him do it that's right you know you get to the point where there comes a time where the lord is saying okay I want to manifest myself more through you. Right. And you start to get a trembling. Mm. A holy fear of God, because you know what that means. But what we need to do is say, Lord, I'm willing. Use me. Move through me. Manifest yourself through me, Lord. Uh, I'm willing to do it. I'm yes, willing to yes. be your vessel. Yes. Yes, Lord, I'm willing to go there. I'm willing to do this. See, our battle, and he's showing us this more and more, how Hallelujah. totally sneaky the devil is. Because God's people, God's true people, have a heart of goodness. Okay? That's right. That's they right. have a heart of giving. That's right. And the devil knows that. And will use that to get his end. And he's even shown us that lately here. You know, because maybe the Lord told you not to go to a certain place, you know, months ago and this and that. And you knew it was the Lord. But then the devil comes in and says, well, you're probably missing. Maybe the Lord is wanting you to go back over there now because you're missing uh, ministry opportunities and this and that and blah, blah, blah. 
so then you go and God's very plain to show you no 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 that's right no 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 do you sense the spirit that's in here that's right do you remember what I told you not to come here that's right yes it was me that told you not to come that's here right. and yes it's still me that's telling you not to come that's here that's right that's right See, Amen. this is the sneaky stuff the devil will do because he'll use stuff. Yeah, he'll and use believers. Yeah, yeah, you know, like that with ministry. Well, you're missing out on, on. You can just, help those yeah, people. Think about all this, yeah. the ministry you did when you did come here. Right. And all the people that were helped when you did come here to this certain place. Well, God didn't mean that you're never supposed to go back over there. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah, he did Praise mean that. God, hallelujah. He sure did mean that. He Man, he I'm amazed it. that it can still happen that way. I, I mean, know. I am after everything God's taught us. I know. But I, let, me, let me finish reading this. I want to read this. <laughs> this is a powerful word right now. I'm telling you. Listen. Okay, he's talking about people. You know, this is Jesus. He's talking so that to believe him to be the Christ, the Messiah, is to believe him to be that prophet Moses said should come and who has declared the whole mind and will of his father and that he is that priest that should arise after the order of Melchizedek oh hallelujah oh praise God hallelujah and then he says and make atonement for sin and intercession for transgressors and that he is that king whom God has set over his holy hill of Zion whose laws are to be obeyed and his commands observed. But to believe that Jesus is the Christ or the Messiah is not barely to give an assent to this truth or to acknowledge it. So the devils themselves have done. Okay, Luke 4.41. Let me read that verse, Luke 4.41. It says, And the devils also came out of many crying out and saying, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. They knew, they knew he was the Messiah. The devils did. Okay? The devils did. And what's the devil's job now? To keep people blinded. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians that the world is blind. If you're listening to this message today and you're not born anew, it's because you are blind. Okay? You think you can see, but you can't see. You think you're okay with your intellectualism or whatever and your your information and your, and your wonderful uh, knowledge of stuff. But you're blind if you're not born anew and filled with the Spirit of God. And you can be unblind when you cry to God to give you sight lord say show me my filth and show me that my need for you save me save me and he will hallelujah you'll be um, you'll be have sight hallelujah and whole nations of men multitudes of which were never born of god it is not a mere profession of it before men or an idle inoperative faith which is destitute of love to christ and obedience to him but whereas his work and business as the Christ of God was to bring in an everlasting righteousness. That's what we have today. We are his children. To procure the remission of sin, we have that. And to make peace and reconciliation for it. And to obtain eternal salvation. True faith in him as the Messiah is a believing with the heart unto righteousness. Or a looking to and trusting in the righteousness of Christ. For justification and a dealing with his blood for pardon and cleansing under a sense of guilt and filth and a laying hold on his atoning sacrifice for the expiation of sin and peace with God and a reception of him as the only Savior and Redeemer or a dependence on him for life and salvation and which faith shows itself in love to him and in a professed subjection to his gospel and cheerful submission to his ordinances. And every such person is born of God. Hallelujah. See, look, 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 look. I got to read that again. Uh, <laughs> and which faith shows itself, you say you have faith, in love to him and in a professed subjection to his gospel gospel his his good news and cheerful submission 
to his ordinances. Do we have that all the time? Cheerful submission. And if we love See? him, we're going to be in obedience. subjection. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to obey him. To him. That's right. And every such person is born of God, is a partaker of the divine nature, what you were saying earlier. See? Has Christ formed in every grace of the Spirit implanted in him? Hallelujah. We have that now. Just a lot of it hasn't manifested. Because the flesh man still in the way. That's why we cry out, Lord, crucify us. Lord, we want to walk with you. See, we die daily. Hallelujah. And every grace of the Spirit is implanted in him, among which faith in Christ is a considerable one. And such an one, in consequence, is openly a child and heir of God. Wherefore, to be born of God is an instance of great grace and in high honor and privilege, and of the greatest moment and importance. Regeneration is not owing to the power and will of man, but to the abundant mercy and goodwill of God, and is an instance of his rich mercy and great love and free favor and commands love again. And everyone that loveth him that begat, that is God, the Father, who has begotten them again to a lively hope, according to his abundant mercy and sovereign will. And as he is their father that has begotten them, they cannot but love him. And such an one loveth him also that is begotten of him. Not only Jesus Christ, who by nature is the only begotten of the Father, for those who know God to be their father by adoption and regeneration will love Christ, who is the Son of God by nature, but also every regenerate person. See, we're to love one another. See, hallelujah. Every regenerate person, all that are born of God, since they are the children of the same father with them, belong to the same household and family, and bear the image and likeness of their heavenly father on them. Now, what happens when you go, you're standing in the city square. Stuff's going on. Stuff's happening. And everybody's coming together. And you're standing there, and there's Baptists in the crowd, and Catholics in the crowd, and Pentecostals in the crowd. Just those three, okay? Independents, whatever. And they're all talking, what are we going to do, and everything. And you sense this strife thing between people. They're, they're all Christians, right? Why is there strife? Why is there this, this bitterness rising up between this group of people and that group of people? Pride. This? Pride, okay? Arrogance, jealousy, religion, see, the devil, are they really born in there? See, are they really born again? Because when you love God, we're born to love and serve God. We're going to love our neighbor. We're not going to hate people. And you'll speak the truth of God's word. And those groups, you'll see them. They'll be Baptists against Catholics, let's say, or Catholics against Pentecost or whatever, let's just say, they're fighting, okay? There was a time, it's recorded in the Gospel of Luke, I believe, where Herod and Pilate were enemies. They hated each other. They did. But when Jesus came on the scene, Pilate sent Jesus over to Herod because Herod controlled Galilee and Jesus was from Galilee, so he sent him over there. Jesus didn't say one word to Herod, didn't open his mouth one time. And from that day forward, Pilate and Herod were friends. So you got these groups that are against each other in the Christian faith. You come in, Sharon, we go in, or you go in, you are listening, and you preach the truth of the gospel, the whole truth, all the truth, nothing but the truth, hallelujah. So help us God, we preach the whole truth of the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You condemn religion, religion of men, because it's it's not of God. True religion and undefile is what? Take care of the widows and the orphans, right? And all in need. Hallelujah. And when you preach the truth, like Jesus did, what happens? <clears throat> all those Catholics and Baptists, they'll become friends against you. See? That's what happens, isn't it? We were in an ecumenical place. Everybody believed however they wanted to believe. Right? People disagreed with each other in the in the in the in the in the place, they would disagree with each other and really didn't agree on hardly anything, right? But they agreed on coming against the truth, didn't they? Right? 
Remember that? Mm -hmm. They agreed on coming against the truth. That's the truth. You know, unfortunately, in the body of Christ, <coughs> and the reason it's written in the scriptures about why is there strife and these things among you, he was talking to them. Right. Why are these things among you? He's talking to the church. That's right. Jealousies, strivings. Envyings. Envyings. James why, chapter 4. Why are these things among you? Unfortunately, they are among the body of Christ. That's and, right. And why did he say they were? He said, because ye are yet carnal. That's, well, that was Paul talking that. Yeah, you know, that's right. So some people say there's no such thing as a carnal Christian. Really? Then what's that scripture? That's Where, right. How can you get around that scripture right there? That's what Paul said. It just said it. It said there's strivings <laughs> and there's there's all these envyings and jealousies. And why did he say there was? Because, because ye, are yet carnal. ye are yet carnal. That's right. So these things are in the body of Christ and God wants them out. So he doesn't they want out? us to be carnal. By the Spirit. Amen. Right. Amen. He wants us to to bow to him. Amen. Amen. Preach it. And let him remove everything that's not of him. Everything of this fleshly carnal nature. You know why? Because he's telling us, hey, I've given you a new nature. What are you acting like this for? <laughs> That's right. Hallelujah. What are you acting like this for? I've given That's you right. a new nature. But why would the Lord have Paul say that? Because they were doing that. Because they were doing that. Amen. So the Lord is addressing things in his word that his people were doing. Right. That there were things that were going on amongst his people. He had Paul addressing these things. Right. And then he had him pinpoint why it was happening. That's right. Because ye are yet carnal. That's right. In other words, you are yet fleshly. That's right. You're walking by the flesh. What did Jesus, what did Jesus say? If they command your coat, what? Give them your cloak also. Right? If they tell you to go one mile, go with them twain. Okay? Jesus used these examples. In the church in Corinth, they were suing one another. Christians, brothers, taking each other to court before the tribunal of the Romans. Okay? They were carnal. They were using their minds. That's what it See? says. And that's what word. Paul said. No, no, no. That's a no-no. See? That's a no-no. Don't do that. And they were not receiving the things of the Spirit. Why? Because they were walking by the carnal mind. But they were saints. He called them saints. That's right. Now, We've said this many times. There's many people in these denominations who are saints. But a lot of them, the vast majority, are operating by the carnal mind. See? And God is calling them out. That's right. Especially now. There is such stuff right. going on in these churches of today. <coughs> God is calling his people out of this organized church system. I mean, I don't see in this hour how a truly... Holy Spirit filled person can sit in a place where they can see and hear things that are going totally against the Word of God and then just keep sitting there and, and hearing it right. and being partaker of it. I remember back when that I had said something to a lady and the Lord had us in a place. He had us warring in this place big time against the devil. And the things that were going on. And it seemed like John and I were the only ones that recognized these things in this place. No one else seemed to recognize what was going on but me and John. And one time I, I said this to this lady. I said, did you hear what he said? Talking about the speaker. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear that he's totally against what God says in his word and her response to me and this is a response of many people of today sitting in false congregations false gospel congregations this is the response as well I can just about bet on it she said oh well I just turn it off I just turn it off and I'm just thinking of something else while they're talking 
hey, that ain't going to get you out of it. (laughs) (laughs) You're sitting in it. You're becoming part of it. You're hearing it, whether you think you hear it or not. That's right. Whether you think you're turning it off or not. That's right. No, it's going in. That's right. And it's doing its work. I can guarantee you. That's right. God tells his people to come out Out. of her. That's right. My people. And he is saying it in a more vehement way than he ever has before in this hour. Come out of her, my people. Amen. You're not going to be able to tell him, well, well, I just spit out the bones and I took the good. I just took the good of what was said and I spit the rest out. What does the Lord say? I'm going to spew you out the of my, lukewarm amen, amen. out of his mouth. That's right. That's right. Isn't that kind of a lukewarm attitude right there? Yeah. He says, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Over and over again, he has given the warnings. Over and over again, he said, come out of her, my people. Well, well, I want to be in the loop, God. (laughs) I want to have some friends, God. I need these people to be nice to me. They smile so nice and pretty. See, they're sacrificing the truth for this community, right? They sacrifice the truth. You cannot sacrifice the truth. You must stand for the truth. When Richard Wormbrand was sitting in that meeting with his wife and the communists had taken over Romania and Richard Wormbrand was in the meeting. It's like 1950 something or early 50s and they had a meeting of all the religious leaders of the town or whatever that he was in and this communist was up there talking about how they're going to do this now and this now in the church and all this stuff you know this is how you're going to and you can't anybody can't proselytize or you can't do this or that you can't try to win people to god anymore basically and nobody was saying a word. Everybody was just sitting there. And his wife gave him the elbow right in the ribs and said, Stand up and be a man. Speak for the Lord, basically. So he, he, he stood up. He was convicted. And he spoke for the Lord. He spoke the truth of God's word. And he went to jail for 13 years for speaking. Okay? And he suffered greatly. And that's when the Lord came to him and said, What's your name? He started to say his name, and he said, I don't have a name. See, he suffered for the Lord. See, people don't want to suffer. That's another thing the devil, you know, oh, Jesus came so you don't have to suffer. That is a lie. It's totally against the Gospels. It's totally against the Word of God. Totally against it. Okay? And when suffering comes, it's like everybody blames it on the devil. Hey, if you surrender to God, God's going to make sure... You are conformed and transformed into his image. And it takes pressure, okay? It takes the screws being put to us in order for the flesh man to die, okay? But it's it's not all walking around 24-7, all uh, hurting and painting all the time, okay? It's not yeah. like that. There's joy and rejoicing in your trials, man, because you know you're being made into his image. Hallelujah. You know, I know the Lord wants to annihilate this thing in his people. That always has an inward turn to me. Expect, explain Look what what's you mean. happening to me. Okay, okay. Look what they're doing to me. Right. Look how That's they're right. hurting me. Yep. Look what they're saying to me. God wants to annihilate in that All in us, of us. because That's right. just with Wormbrand, what's your name? He started, I don't have a name. He said, I don't have a name. Okay, what would that mean? If he didn't have a name, that means he he is out of the picture. Right. Isn't that what that means? So, <coughs> if we are out of the picture, if we are truly dead to ourselves, are we going to have all these thoughts? No. What's happening to me? No, we won't. Look what they're saying to me. Look how they're treating me. And sometimes it seems that we got miles and miles and miles to go. I know. You know, and, and I the know. Lord is so merciful. The Lord is, he knows that we are but flesh. He knows that. But that's no excuse not to keep his commandment. Verse 2, 
By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. People could say, I love God. Okay, see? People can say, no, people can say, I love people. I love, I love all mankind. And then don't keep the commandments of God. They're, they're liars. You see? When you keep the commandments of God, what's God's commandments? It's summed up in this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. This fulfills the law and the prophets. Okay? Because if you love God above all, if we love God, then we're going to obey. His it's word. It's going to be. Hallelujah. He says he's written these things in our heart. Amen. So if he's written them in our heart, that means that's a part of our nature. Is that not right? That's right, baby. Amen. Is that not right? That's right. It's that means nature that's part us. of our Hallelujah. nature. Okay. Do you have to strive to do anything by nature? No. no. You just breathe. You it just even... happens, yeah, doesn't that's it? That's right. It's just a flow, isn't it? That's right. If it's part of you, it's part of your nature. It's just who you are. <laughs> That's right. It's how you live, isn't that right? That's right, sir. Praise God. So, by this we know that, that we, love we love the love children of God, God and keep his commandments. When we love God and when keep his commandments. When we love God. Yeah. Now, look, look at that word love. See, that's what word is that? It's agapeo. It's the verb. It's the action. See? By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. We're born to love and serve God. If we love the Lord. I love the Lord. If we really love the Lord, we will love his people. That's right. We'll love all people. You know, we'll love. We, we're the liars and you the know, sinners that are going to hell. We will love. Amen. We will intercede. Have his heart when we see someone. Praise God. That we warn going the other way, and not even heeding that warning. We'll have a swelling up inside of us. We'll have the love of God inside of us, watching them walk away. Because just as the Lord knows, we also know by His Spirit. That's right. Which way they're headed. That's right. And the path, and it grieves. It grieves us. Hallelujah. You're you not happy about someone going <coughs> down the wrong path. Nope. You grieve That's when right. you have the Spirit of God in you, That's the true right. Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Let's let's pray, honey. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word today. We were born. You born you birthed us into this world, Lord. Into this cosmos, this world system. And then you chose us out of it for your glory. Hallelujah. You created us to love you. And Lord, we've loved you since we were little children, Lord, and probably everyone here in this. I don't know. But Lord, we want to know more about what that entails. Loving you. Loving you. Showing you that we love you. By being obedient to your word. Being obedient to your commands in our heart. Heavenly Father, we ask that you will touch us all, Lord. Touch my dear wife right here, Lord. Touch me. Touch all those hearing, Lord. Every saint that comes to listen to these messages, Lord. Father, we pray that you would just put your supernatural anointing of love upon them today. That you would touch them, O oh God. That you would fill them, O oh God, with your purpose. O oh God, that you would just instruct them in every area they need instructing today, Lord. They have questions. They have prayers going up to you, Lord. We ask you to hear their prayers, Lord. Hallelujah. Let the, the angel with the incense, Lord, receive all of our prayers today. Even this one being prayed right now. And Father, just let it go up, Lord. Let it go up. Hallelujah. Lord, your people, your church, your true remnant, we need you, Lord. We want to be hungry for you. Keep that hunger in our hearts, O oh God. And help us to look unto you continually, the author and the finisher of our faith, and stop 
the devil down under our feet, O oh God. Let it manifest in our lives and all the life of your people throughout the earth that you have won the victory, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to the King. God is great and good. This is a powerful series. Uh, one John, I mean, we go through two verses today. I thought we'd get through a lot more than that. But it's okay because God wanted to, everything said today that was said. I mean, God has a purpose. God has a purpose. One thing we've learned is that you have to walk by faith. And I mean, we're learning that more and more and more and more. When you're speaking for the Lord and you're you're speaking, man, you, you have faith. You, I mean, it's the, you can only do it by revelation and faith from God. I mean, you can't do it any other way, okay? And that's the way we keep doing it. And we're going to keep going down that road, amen, of faith and trusting in God. Faith, hope, and love. These are the three things that last. And the greatest of these is love, amen? So all of the agape love talked about here in verse 1 and verse 2 of 1 John 5, it comes from agape. Okay, and that's where we're going to get to again, because agape is God. Hallelujah. Okay, and praise God. It's a serving love. It's you just don't, can't say I love God and then not not do anything for Him. I mean, you bow down to Him, you worship Him. See, Amen. You every obey. day, yeah, every day, every obey day Him. Says. Amen. You go to your enemy, you give him a cold drink of water. See, that's what Jesus did. You see what I mean? Oh, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If you want to contact us, you can at the Kings Road 2000 at gmail.com. The Kings Road 2000 at gmail.com. You can always you can also download an MP3 of this broadcast on this link, and there's other links to the YouTube channel and the blogs and also archived radio broadcast. So. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his holy face to shine upon you. The Lord our God lift up his holy countenance on you, grant you peace. The Lord be gracious unto you today. His name, that's his authority, his character, his dominion, his love. Hallelujah. Be in and upon your life today. As you go forth conquering and to conquer with the weapons of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.